In this video, we are going to be creating a custom material for the targets so that way they will go from green to a red color when they are out of health. We'll also be adjusting the crosshair material because it might have been annoying you to notice that we have a black and white image when part of it should have been transparent. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we're going to need a new folder, yet again, for our materials. Try to keep everything organized because when you're looking for something and you can't find it, you're going to wish you did. Also, if you haven't done it already, I would recommend, again, saving all because once you lose everything, you're going to be very annoyed. So, now that we have our material folder, let's make a material. Pretty simple, right click, choose material, and we'll name this target mat because this is our target material. Open it up and it's pretty simple to see. So now that we have a target material, we are going to need to actually do something with it. Well, since we're going to put this on our targets, well, let's put it on our targets. Let's drag and drop, and we'll notice it's not going to work. If we drag it onto the floor, well, we notice we're not gonna have an issue as well. It will actually work on the floor. When you are dragging and dropping on here, because this is a blueprint, it's not automatically going to assign it you're going to need to assign it to the cube itself. So if we drag down to here, now you notice it's assigned to the cube itself, but just for this instance. The easiest way to correct this is let's edit our blueprint for the target. Let's go to our viewport, cube, and let's go ahead and set our material up. Since I already have it selected in our content browser, we can use our little arrow here and it'll assign it, or we can just drag and select our only target material. And that's it. Now it'll be assigned by default to every one of our cubes. So now that we have it assigned, we're going to need to go ahead and create the material itself so we can do something with it. Now, all we're going to do here is create a basic color material, and then we are going to adjust it as we need to. If we right click and we add in a color node, or we hold down the three key, and click with the left mouse button, we're going to go ahead and add a constant 3 vector. R, G, B, X, Y, Z. That is how we do the basics of colors inside of a material. If we wanted it to be just a black or white, we could use a constant 1. In this case, we want a white, so we can double click, change it to white, or we could adjust the parameters over here. We'll plug this into our base color, and now we have a pretty simple white material. Since I want this to be non-metallic and not rough, I want it to be kind of like a plastic, we're going to go hold down 1 to make a constant 1. We're going to do it twice. We're going to plug those into roughness and metallic. And that's it. This is going to set up our basic material. It's going to be a little plasticky material that's white. If we save it and apply it, it's going to go ahead and apply that to our scene, as you can see here. If we look in our background, we have a white background as well because that is the default that we have. Let's change this back to nothing. And there we go. Now it stands out a little better. And there's our custom material and it's white. Now if we wanted to adjust this individually, there's a few different ways we could do it. We could create a material instance. We could make the color parameter and then we could adjust it for each target. But because we want to do this in runtime, what we're going to do is create a dynamic material instance inside of our blueprint and then adjust it in real time. Now in order to do that we need a parameter we can adjust. A parameter is basically a node that has been exposed, kind of like a variable. It gives it a name and it allows us to adjust it in runtime. Now you can create, if we go to our parameter section, let's find it in here somewhere. You can create any of these as parameters. And if we were to drag this over here, you'll notice just the scalar parameter, which has just like this. Or for something like this, it's going to be a larger parameter where it's got three different values. Now the nice thing is, let me see it's right here, vector parameter. Now the nice thing is you can take an existing parameter, oh, sorry, an existing node, and parameterize it by right-clicking and choosing convert to parameter. So we right click on our color node, convert to parameter, it changes it to a vector parameter. Let's name it to color. 
And we're done. That's all we're going to need to do to our material. We now have a material where if we access the color parameter, it'll change its color. So let's go ahead and close that and move on to the next section. So the next section is going to be setting up the dynamic material and setting up our function in order for it to work. The dynamic material is basically created at runtime on our target and it's assigned as the new material on our mesh so that way and then saved as a reference so that way we can adjust that color parameter so it's a lot of talk but let's go ahead and see how this works we've already has have an event play where we store our starting health value so off of this we're going to create a dynamic material instance and you'll see it right here and it's going to ask you what you want to create it on or if you want to create it on the material we'll just do the create it on the material version now the parent is going to be what material this is since we have a lot of options let's go ahead and choose the first one target material and then we're going to go ahead and store the return value because we're going to be working with this material instance later we need it as a variable and let's save this very aptly named as dynamic mat so now we have a dynamic material variable now if we were to go ahead and let's say we set the color on this which is a custom event that was not what I meant to do I meant to add a function for setting the color eh you know what let's let's do this let's do this another way let's put it in here and then let's collapse it let's see it break and then let's fix it so how this works is the dynamic material if we were to pull off of it and we do the set parameter you're gonna find scalar texture and vector since our dynamic material color is a vector let's go ahead and set it as the set vector and let's change this to red so we know we've changed it let's make it let's make it red red and parameter name was color and let's go ahead and run this and nothing should happen now why did nothing happen well first of all we have an issue here we've created a dynamic material instance we have saved the dynamic material instance and we've changed the color on the dynamic material instance but the problem is the cube doesn't know it's supposed to be using this dynamic material instance and why is that well we never told it once ahead again we got ahead of ourselves so this is pretty simple after we set the material sorry after we set the dynamic material now we set the material so let's drag off and do set material and you'll find set material cube now the nice thing is it automatically well let's unhook this because that's annoying it automatically knows we can set the material on the cube so it automatically set this up to plug it in element index 0 is going to be your default material if you have multiple materials you have to make sure you use the right material index and then for the material it wants well we don't want target material we want our dynamic material so what this is doing is taking this cube taking element zero this target material and replacing it with the dynamic version of the target material now if we go in here and we set on the dynamic material the color parameter red and we run it now we have red cubes and we can shoot them and they'll react accordingly and of course if we were to change the color it'll change appropriately so now that we have a dynamic material assigned where we can change the color let's go ahead and convert this into a function that we might want to reuse later so we'll easily collapse the function we'll name this one set color because I got ahead of myself and we'll open it up and there we go now we're setting the color to red obviously this isn't what we want because it's only red but all we need to do now is a little bit of math a little bit of jiggery and we've got it so earlier I mentioned we have a starting health value and it's always good to save stuff like that if you intend on using it later and since we were going to be adjusting our colors based on our health we need to know our starting health value and this is going to be very very simple what we're going to do is take our health value this is our current health and then we're going to take our starting health this is the health we started with and we are going to divide them 
Now we are going to have an issue. This will not work and then we will fix it. And I'll explain why it will not work once it doesn't work. What we will use is a lerp node. We're going to use a lerp linear color because Epic was nice enough to give us one thing that works very simply. What this does is it takes in a value, an alpha between zero and one. And if it's zero, we're going to go ahead and get the top color. And if it's one, we're going to get the bottom color or the B input. And if it's any value between, well, we're going to get a color between. So it really nicely gives us between zero and 100% a red or a green. And the return value plugs right into our color. Now, if we were to plug this in here, it's going to go ahead and convert it. And if we were to run this, well, it's not really going to work right. Run this and you'll notice we have black. Well, we have black because we didn't set up our colors. So that's the first thing we need to do. So let's actually set this to one for our zero color. And let's set this to green for our secondary color. And let's run it again. We run it and you'll notice we have green. Now if we fire on this one over here, or this one which has five, it's not going down. Why is it not going down? Well, like I said, the alpha takes between a zero and a one. The problem is integers don't have decimal points. We're not gonna get back a value between zero and one. So what we need to do is we actually need to convert, instead of doing the division and converting to float, we need to convert to float and then do the division. So if we cheat and we know we're gonna divide a float by a float, we can do this and then we can automatically have it convert like that. Then we can try reorganizing a little bit like that and plug this in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert our health value and our starting health value. Let's say this is five and this is one. Then you're going to convert into floats and we're getting 1.0 and 5.0 and then you divide and you end up with one fifth or in decimal terms 0.2 which we're going to get a closer to red value. If we go ahead and run this and check it out. One of those destroyed one hit, destroyed one hit, destroyed two hits and we're still having issues. So why is that? Well, we need to look at what we're doing and we need to figure out if we're doing something wrong. Well, this is, should hopefully be pretty simple. Where are we actually setting the color once we fire on it? We're setting it when it starts, but nowhere are we actually setting it once we get hit. This is one of those things where there's so many small parts to a puzzle, you just have to think it through. And basically, if we think it through, once we get hit, we want to set the color. And that's why we have this function right here. So where are we going to do this? Well, we want to do it after we get hit. That would be the smarter place to put it. So let's take this. Here's an also a nice hint. You can use the arrow keys to move. So you can easily move things left or right. So that way they stay in order. We'll do set color. And we'll go ahead and we'll run it again. Let's see if it broke. Fire, destroyed, fire, destroyed, fire, and there we go. Now we get a yellowish color, basically halfway between green and red. And then it's destroyed. We should have five different stages here. And then destroyed. So there we go. Now we actually have a color that adjusts in runtime, which is set. We have a color, which is a, we have a material, which is a color which changes its color based on the damage that we've done to the target based on how much health it has and how much health it has total. And the nice thing is since everything's in variables, let's say we want this one to have 10 health. We run it and we start firing at it. It'll have 10 different stages all the way down. So it's nice to easily adjust things once you set things up in a open-ended way. We'll go and move this back over and we are done. We now have an adjustable material. Let's go ahead and do our last part, which is fixing our crosshair. So if we pull up our crosshair and we look at it right here, basically this is using, it's an image. 
The image doesn't know what is transparent and what is not transparent. Your images for your user interfaces are going to be opaque or they're going to be solid, basically. What we need to do is create another material. That material will be defined as a mask. That mask will say, okay, this part's white and not transparent. This part's black and is transparent. And then we'll use that material for our crosshair. So this one's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and we'll go to materials. We'll create a new material. We'll call this one crosshair mat. We will open it up. What we need to do in the crosshair mat is we are going to add in a texture sample. A texture sample basically takes in a texture and outputs each of the channels. Now our texture sample is going to be our crosshair. And of course you notice we don't have it anymore because we hid the editor. Show the inch of content. And that one was called target point, target icon. Click on target icon and now we have that. Set it up for our base color and we have our target. It's still not transparent though. There's two things here. First of all, you need to set your mode to transparency. If when we do this, we're going to get our masking set up actually if we set this to mask. So if we were to set this up to mask like that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to get your transparent. Well, we need to get rid of base color. That's not going to work. There we go. And we'll end up with the transparency. Now there is an issue here. User interfaces. Well, actually, let's just show you the issue. Let's say we have this crosshair material. We go back to our crosshair. We click here. We click here. We hide our engine content. Then we click on the crosshair and we will get a red error. This material does not use the UI material domain. What does that mean? Inside of here, you have the different domains. Surface, decal, light function, post process, and user interface. You need to make sure the domain for user interface object is set to user interface. And the minute you do that, you will immediately lose most of your options. We want to set this to masked because we want to mask it out. And then we want to set it like this. So what this is going to do is it's going to output the final color as black and white, identical to our image, but it's going to use an opacity mask as well to determine what is transparent and what is not. So that's going to make the white parts solid and the black parts transparent. So now that we've done this and we go back to our crosshair and we zoom in, you actually notice we can see through it. If we go back to here and we hit play, you'll actually notice our crosshair has got transparency on it. That's a little hard to see and this isn't the best crosshair, but that's how you would change your user interface elements to have masking or opacity. You'd create a material, change the user interface domain, and you'd set it up something like this. And since we went in here into our image and we changed it to the crosshair material instead of the texture, we're now using a material for our image. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Our next video is going to cover creating a particle effect on hit.